Hello, the internet. My name's Isaac uh, from Fictional Reality Media, and today I'm going to be showing you this video tutorial, or maybe not as much as a tutorial, more of a workflow, on how I create planets in Blender um, using just simple textures. Uh, but before I do that, I'd like to share with you a little something, my, my website. So here at Fictional Reality, you can find a variety of things. Uh, I use this to post works I've done. I have a little store. You can buy images and use them as wallpapers for super cheap. And it's also a great place to find the tutorials I've done, such as this terraforming Mars and Blender. Uh, if you visit my website and look at these tutorials, there's a lot more than just the video. So some screenshots of everything that I went through in the tutorial and it's really a step-by-step -step kind of walkthrough. So I encourage you all to visit that and check it out. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so let's jump into the tutorial. Oh, whoa, go back. Go back, go back. Alright, well anyway, so what we're going to be doing today is talking about planets and creating planets based on just rock textures. So uh, these these three planets here were actually all made from the same, I think four four rock textures. I just wanted to show you, you know, how how simple it can be to create planets. When I first started using Blender, um, I was always more concerned on making procedural based textures for my planets, and I could never quite figure it out at the beginning. And I eventually found that just using natural rock texture it can produce some exciting results. So um, yeah, it it re it really can turn out really well. You can get a lot of a lot of great great detail. So let's let's jump into it. So first thing you'll notice when we jump into Blender is that I'm using the beta version that was just released a couple days ago. It's super great and super exciting. Um, yeah, it's it's awesome. So we're going to be doing the tutorial in that. Um, the things we go over here will also be applicable to, to cycles rendering. Um, I, I think I'll show you a bit of bit of both, which is nice to use the EV renderer because it renders, you know, real time. It's it's, it's a lot of fun. All right, so to begin, uh, let's just delete the cube. We won't be needing that. And Shift A to add a. I'm going to go with an icosphere. Uh, change the subdivisions to a goodly number. I like to do about five. And then click W and change the smooth shading type to smooth shading. And here we have our basic planet. All right, but we don't want to, this doesn't, just viewing it like this doesn't help us too much. So what I like to do is, oops, that's not how you do that. Uh, duplicate the window. There it is. Duplicate the window. Just grab in the corner, click and drag a new one over, and then change the, uh, display method. So trying to familiarize myself with all the new terms. That change this to rendered view. And then you can also disable the overlays. And we have a nice sphere. Alright, go back to this window, select the sun, and we want to actually make this a sun lamp. Uh, the default brightness is pretty good. Then select the world tab, change the color to black, because space is black. All right, so I'm just going to reset the rotation, click Alt-R, then rotate on the x-axis, 90 degrees. And there we go, that looks pretty good. For some reason, Eevee has some weird shading. Not exactly sure what's, what, well, I don't know, I don't know. We'll talk about that in a minute, though. All right, so to make this planet, let me pull up folder here. All I have are um, just these four textures. This is actually a normal map for this one. And there's nothing too special about them. I, I got these three from CG Textures. They're they're just pictures of rocks. They're not tileable or anything. They're just they're just rocks. Uh, so I used these three to kind of make make the surface of the planet. Then I grabbed this one. This is from Texture Haven. Uh, great great website. Um, this one is tileable, and I use this more for the finer details of everything. Uh, so we're going to be using, you know, these three, four, excuse me, textures 
to create a variety of planets, and I'll I'll show you how I how I do that. All right, let's jump into the shader editor. So pull up the timeline. Um, lots of different things here. It's no longer the node editor. We have a specific shader editor. And this is excellent. All right, so click new shader, and by default we have the principal shader, which is excellent again. All right, so first thing we want to do is pull up this window again and just drop in these three textures. Just throw them in there. Doesn't matter what order or anything. Uh, this is this is the creative part. So this isn't necessarily this is how you must do this. This is this is all up to you. Be creative. Do something exciting. Um, find rock textures that are cool or exciting. Don't don't be boring. No one likes that. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. All right. First thing we're going to do is Control A, add an input and texture coordinate. Plug in the generated generated value into the vector uh, of that one, and plug in the color into the base color. And you'll see it stretches it all terribly. So change the projection type from flat to box. And look at that. You got some rocks. Um, we do have this seam right here that doesn't look super great. So just increase the blending a little bit and it goes away. Pretty cool. So, I mean, you could just use that for your planet. I mean, you, you, you do whatever you feel you think is good. I want to increase the surface roughness just to get rid of the strange shine. And you know that that's that's pretty good. But let's let's mix in some of these other textures. So Shift A, add an input, not an input, color and mix RGB. Drop that in right there. Then take the color from the second texture and plug it into color two. And so we need to plug in generated and box projection as well. And you'll see it, it kind of overlays that texture on there a little bit. We still have some crease here, so just increase the blending, and there it goes. So there we see we have a little bit more uh, variation there. We can change the factor, how much we want. Um, yeah, and we'll be doing a little more with that later. So simply, let's add in this third texture. Duplicate that, Shift-D, and plug in Generated change to box and color into color and increase the blending a little bit so that crease fades away that seam whatever it's called all right so now we have a whole lot going on here it is exciting all right so i see there's little bits of like grass or something in there that's kind of fun so to add a bit of color, right? I mean, we could use this default color and just say, "Hey, there we go, cool." Uh, but I like to, I like to mix up the color. You'll see in the, you know, example I gave earlier. This one, it's, it's like red and kind of cool, and this one is green and kind of cool. Those are, those two planets are exactly the same texture setup. I just changed the, the color and added some water to one. All right, so, <coughs> well, excuse me again. Two, add some color, super easy. I'm gonna go Shift A, add in a converter, color ramp, drop it on wherever you please. That's, then you can see you can change the sliders to increase the color a little bit. Uh, what color should we do? Let's do like an orange, like a kind of a Marsy orange. Increase the brightness. Uh, I think that, that looks pretty good. Then we can change this from white to change it to like a, a dark, dark brown. That looks pretty good. Um, yeah, that looks that looks pretty good. Kind of change the mixing a little bit. And one thing I do like to do is um, kind of make this less even mix. Uh, <laughs> if that makes any sense, I'll just show you. So add in a texture, noise texture, plug in the color into the factor, and you'll see it's kind of subtle, but it adds noise to the distribution of the textures. We can increase the contrast of that by adding another color ramp. 
uh, wait for that to load in, and then sliding these values together. We can see the contrast between the orange and the gray a little bit more. Um, I like it a bit more subtle though. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. And then let's say, I think this, was it this one that had the, the bits of green in it? It, it is, all right. So I don't, I don't necessarily want that. So I'm going to shift A, add in another color ramp, drop it in there. And, you know, just gray might work pretty good there. Um, let's see. Yeah, actually, I'm just going to leave it, leave it like that. Leave it with the gray. I kind of, I kind of like that. And then this middle texture here, I think, I think I'm just going to leave that one as well. I don't even I don't even remember what it is. <laughs> that's that's not a bad thing either. The great thing is, you, know, you just do what looks cool, and I think that that's looking pretty cool, right? Um, so to add in that uh, let's add in that fourth texture. The um, oh, words escape my mind. Uh, repeating T tileable. That's it. A texture that tiles. The seamless. Let's drop that in here. And uh, then, whoops, whoops, just jumping around. Duplicate that again. Plug in that to the bottom. And then come over here and grab that. Plug it in. Change to box. And right now all that does is add a little more detail. We have a seam. Increase the blending. There it goes. That looks oh, that looks pretty good too. And you know, for this detail one, the higher resolution the image, the better finer detail you'll get in that. But you can go a step further, uh, shift A and add a vector and mapping and change the scale here. Just select these three values and change the scale of the detail. You don't want to set it too high because I mean it, even though it is tileable you'll start to notice a pattern and you know if that's what you want go for it. Um, there we go. That looks, that looks pretty good. I uh, can also change the color for this. Uh, I'm going to add a color ramp. And I want to match more of that kind of reddish color from earlier. So, uh, let's just make that all. Ooh, that's that's definitely too extreme. We'll to tone that down in a second. I like to do extreme colors first sometimes just to get an idea of what I'm working with. Um, that needs to be orange. Bring that down. Ooh. Let's see. Let's see what else we can get here. Maybe, maybe a slightly orangey purple. That might be cool, right? That's that's kind of, that's that's pink, not purple. Maybe bring that down, so it's just subtle. There you go. I like that. I think that looks cool. Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, each each texture is different, so whatever you think looks cool is cool, you know? This is this is all you. I'm just showing you what I like to do. Um, cool, so you have there a, a planet, and now it's kind of a barren wasteland of a planet, so let's, let's help it out a little bit by adding an atmosphere. So to do that, bump to my microphone, uh, select the sphere, shift D to duplicate it, Click, let go, and scale it up. We'll scale it up nice and big to begin with. Go over to the textures or materials, remove that one, add a new one, change this to mix shader, change the top one to transparent, and the bottom one to diffuse. Now this is where EV gets a little different because we can see Nothing happened. Even though we've got this transparent shader, nothing's going on. We need to change the blend mode down here to from opaque, meaning the object is opaque, to alpha hashed. Now you could ask me what alpha hash means, and I could not tell you, but I know that it works. So do that. Uh, <laughs> then we can see that now now it's acting more like it would in, in cycles. It's a little different. All the shading in EV is kind of different. It's it's fun to experiment with. All right, so let's scale that down. We'll leave it a little big so we can see what we're doing. Then go back to the shader editor, shift, 
A, Shift A, I don't know why I forgot that for a second. Add in an input and layer weight. Connect the Fresnel value, I love that word, into the factor. And you can kind of tell you've got a, it's more thick at the edge. That's the right word. Uh, so I change the blend down and you'll see a bit more contrast there. That looks pretty good. Let's scale it down so it's just, oh, oh, too small. So it's just larger than the surface of the planet. And one thing Eevee does is you can it, see it on the, the back facing side of the planet. Not sure why that is. It doesn't really make sense. The light's not shining on it. But hey, it's all good. So I just like to get that as small as possible. Cool. All right. You can see it's it's a little grainy. So go over here to our little. It looks like a briefcase. Well, just like the settings, your generic settings, and um, go over to sampling and viewport samples. Right now it's at 16. Uh, because it renders so fast, you can go as high as you want. I'm just going to go 100. And you can see immediately that that helps. All right, back to the shader. Let's add a little color to the atmosphere. Uh, do something that looks cool. Maybe we could do a little of that. Uh, I'm going to go with red. Uh, maybe orange. Maybe like a tan. Or blue. Let's go with blue. I like the contrast between the the blue and the orange. Uh, this is looking similar to the one I did earlier, isn't it? That's okay. Wow, yeah. I somehow got different texture mixing. Mixing. I don't even know what I did different. But that's the great part about it is each time it, it turns out different. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's fun. I love my job. All right. So that looks that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Um, let's save this. Always save your work. Uh, let's see. Planet underscore tutori tutorial. There we go. That works. All right, and then let's clean up our scene now. And one great thing that the scene editor has is collections, so you can create multiple collections and hide entire collections. It's excellent. Um, I haven't really used that much, but I can see where it would be useful. <laughs> so let's select our atmosphere, rename it, atmosphere, then our planet, call it planet. You could get more creative than me, but hey, it's naming things. It's not that important, right? As long as you can figure out what you're doing. Cool. That looks pretty good. Uh, all right, so let's let's move on to the next part. Um, this part where we take that and turn it into that. Totally different, right? We're not going to change the the textures at all. We're just going to change the colors. Yeah, cool. All right, so the first thing we need to do, you know, actually let's let's select both of these. Uh, so select one, shift click, select the other and press G to move them out of the way. And then let's duplicate both of them. Click Alt G to, whoa, that one's colorful. I don't know what happened over there. We'll check that out later. All right, so let's begin changing this to more, being more Earth-like. <laughs> 